Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires today Big Jim Dwyer made his last trip to the shores where his father's lay as MBL playing as the Poles in red gets ready to take on Sito playing as the Aztecs in blue now all the players heard their hurtables explore their immediate surroundings with all of their scouts and try to go up to feudal ASAP let's take a look at the Civ matchup we'll be watching today now the Poles are a civilization very much focused on their cavalry. If you're in the mood for something light, their scout cavaline units do come with a small attack bonus against archers and can be upgraded to do trample damage, which can be very, very helpful in the late game since Poles are one of the only two civs in the game to have their hussars replaced with winged hussars, which are already tankier and stronger than normal hussars and come with a nice big attack bonus against gunpowder units and an even bigger attack bonus against monks, which might spell a little bit of trouble for our Aztec in blue. Now, if instead you're in the mood for something a little heavier, pole knights and cavaliers can both be upgraded to cost a lot less gold. And when I say a lot, I mean it's 60% less gold. So it does become much easier to spam these heavy units starting in Castle Age. And to back up their cavalry units, the pole can, poles can field a unique unit, the Oboch. This is a tanky, well-armored infantry unit whose attack actually reduces the melee and pierce armor of its opponents by one with each swipe of its massive warhammer. That's to support the production of their food and gold intensive cavalry units, Pole stone miners also generate gold and their farmers, let's take a look at where his berries are, not out just yet, but their farmers that do have access to a unique structure called the Fullwork. This replaces their mill and any farm seated within its radius automatically adds 8% of the value of the farm to their coffers, Oh, and if that's not enough for you, it also does provide five population room. Now, pole villagers are also harder to raid and kill because like Viking Berserkers, they do regenerate HP starting in the Feudal Age. Now, across to the southeast, we've got the Aztecs in blue played by Sito, very much a warrior monk civilization. Their monks gain five hit points for every tech that's researched. So a fully upgraded Aztec monk comes with a massive whopping 95 HP compared to the usual 30 or 45. Now to help with the gold cost of upgrading your monks, which uh, if you play this game and go monks, you know it's significant. Each one of these bad boys, each relic, all generates 33% more gold than normal. And has he already discovered the relic with his turkey? Yes, he has. Or maybe it's with the Eagle Scout. Who knows? It looks, maybe, <laughs> it looks like it could have been the Eagle Scout. In any event, to support their monks on the field of battle, all Aztec military units are produced 11% faster. Their skirmishers can be upgraded to have extra range and attack, and their infantry can be upgraded to come with a massive plus four general attack bonus, which is great for their unique unit, the Jaguar Warrior, a middle-of-the-road infantry unit that does come with a pretty strong attack bonus against other infantry units. Now, to support their military production, Aztec villagers do carry three extra resources right from the start of the game. And if you take a look at the top right of your screen, you'll notice they start with 50 extra gold in their bank. So they can get loom basically for free, or they can train two extra militiamen and try to harass their opponents very early on. Those are the two civilizations. I'm pretty excited, not just because these are two incredibly powerful players with two very similar elos. And uh, it's mostly... I shouldn't say mostly. It's I'm very excited for this matchup. Like I said, the Aztecs, warrior monk civilizations, but the Poles with access to arguably the best monk sniping unit in the game, maybe one of the best, if not the best, the winged Hussar. I believe it comes with a plus 14 attack bonus against monks, although Aztec monks do come with 95 HP if they're fully upgraded. And by the way, monks and light, Cavalry units aside, infantry versus infantry unique units should also be fun. One reduces the armor of its opponent. One has a massive attack bonus against its armor. So I'm hoping we get to see Jaguars against Obuchs. Right, What we're seeing right now, though, is, like I said, two basically free when it comes to gold militiamen. Ooh, the eagle is trying to block the way of the villager, but two extra villagers come out. They already have Lumen. By the way, let me show you full work. When you click on it, opens up a nice radius. Any farm seated within this red shaded zone, 8% of that value, or 8% of the farm's value, a quantity of food, when I say value, uh, it gets added to the pole coffers immediately once the farm is seated. Looks like first blood here going to our pole, getting rid of one of the two militiamen. And he's moving unperturbed by the presence of two enemy units. <laughs> MBL, cool as a cucumber, just completing his barracks. 
which should complete a little bit ahead of when he will hit Feudal Age, our Aztec. Hasn't even clicked up to Feudal Age, although I suspect once once we uh, 3 2 one Loom completes, there we go. I don't know why he was waiting so long to click up. Is it a mind game? Does he not want his score to drop? I'm not too sure what the point of that was. Why did he didn't just click it right after he uh, clicked Loom? In any event, let's see where the players have spawned and their bases. See if anyone is particularly advantaged or disadvantaged. Our pole, primary gold, nice and secure in the kind of back position. Primary stone, ooh, I don't know what to make of this. I don't like resources with big hills next to them because opponents can take that hill and rain holy terror down on you with a 25% attack bonus. Unless they're Tatars, then it's a 50% attack bonus. But primary gold, not a uh, stone rather, not too far off campus, not too risky. A few patches of gold to the south and an extra patch of stone to the northeast. And now our pole is returning the favor with a rating of his own, does get a villager. So two kills to none, including a villager kill. This wall off should have been completed a while ago if our Aztec was intending to turtle up. But let's see where his resources are. Primary gold, oh no, very exposed to the front. Primary stone, nice and secure in the back. Additional stone off campus and uh, additional gold to the north and to the east where he's using it as part of his wall off. Not a bad idea, especially not when the resource is in the backwards position. Oh, I wish we uh, I wish I had caught this and seen the farms go up. We could have seen the 8% being added to the coffers. Our Aztec struggling to get a kill while at the same time trying to make sure his villagers aren't killed any more than they already have been. So a little bit of a delicate dance here for both players. One trying to bust in with men at arms, trying to make sure he doesn't get trapped in here because that's the last thing you want to be is trapped in your enemy's base. The other with his Dark Age units uh, getting horse collar. So not really upgrading these militias anymore. Uh, why the hell would he? He's only got one left. Going instead for skirmishers. This is a, a potentially risky area here for MBL, by the way. A well-placed building and a palisade wall will trap him in here. And then he has no choice but to exit the base. But never mind. Forget the buildings. He's got the archer out. Does Sito. And thus ends all of the pole aggression. So comfortable, in fact, the Sito that he deletes this palisade wall here that is basically saved this villager's life. Ooh, but our Aztec isn't done yet. <laughs> trying to get some kind of trying to get um what was it that Terry Pratchett once said uh, that I'm gonna I'm gonna basically uh appropriate here. Trying to kill a villager in Dark Age or Feudal Age with a militiaman is like trying to beat someone to death with a shoelace. Sure, maybe in a million years you'll be able to do it, but until then, all you're doing is just gently flogging and tickling your your opponent. And I think uh, Sito realizes that, so now they're back probably on scout duty. Who's kidding who? I don't think they're going to really take any engages seriously here. Yeah, even this is a bit of a movement here, perhaps designed to make MBL panic and withdraw some of his... Villagers, but MBL, not his first time at the rodeo, knows there's, there's literally no reason to panic as he is now on the other side of the map. He's brought two skirmishers with him. Ooh, might want to reposition these gold miners over here just to make them a little bit safer. Okay. Even with the skirmishers, I mean, look how little HP they actually reduce of the enemy units. And this is just a unit with two pierce armor. Imagine a unit that has even more, but the archers are here now. Four of them and two skirmishers. Goodbye aggression from our pole. I don't think there's going to be much that he can do here. See, with the poles, you have to be very careful because this symbol here, it's also used for the full work. So until you actually click it, I mean, obviously you can tell right next to the forest. Uh, you shouldn't ever, never be placing a full work right next to a forest because it limits the space where you can plop down farms. So obviously with the positioning, we know it's a blacksmith, but a word of caution to anyone watching, to anyone. I'll try to catch the next full work when it goes, uh, gets plopped down and show you what I mean by that. This is obviously a blacksmith because, you know, Sito does not have access to a full work. The wall off continuing here for red. Both players walling themselves off. I wonder if that means both of them are planning to be super duper aggressive. Although, right as I say it, and then I, I was literally about to say, or they're planning to fast castle. And then MBL with the pole. 
Does he have any stone miners? No, he does not. But the full work, one, two, three, four, five, six farms. 8% of six farms added for free is not a bad thing. Manages to click up to Castle Age light years ahead of his opponent. Aztec, nowhere close. He is currently battling Jaguars in the middle of nowhere. Let's take a look at what his economy looks like. Does he have the requisite structures? We know he's got the archery range and the blacksmith. So yes, he does. And now a market going down in the back of his base. Okay, so in the next few seconds, Sito will have the requisite food. And right as I say that, he just buys it. Because <laughs> why the hell not? And now he's clicking up to Castle Age. But a full minute and 20 seconds behind his opponent. That being said, this is not an engage that our Aztec wants to take right now. This is a lot of skirmisher defense here. And do these men at arms, by the way, coming with a bonus against Eagles? Yeah, plus two already. Sometimes certain bonuses don't kick in until certain stages of the game. And the Eagle, his days are limited. I don't know why uh, MBL just doesn't use these skirmishers to try to trap him and, and get him, but he's probably going to trap himself here. He's definitely going to enter this nook and realize, hey, I have no way to exit here. And the quicker moving scout here from our pole decides to jump in. Did he get the kill? Ooh, it's hard to say. This guy has one kill. This guy has three kills with two HP left. A battered war veteran. He should be home collecting his pension. He should not be out here on the field of battle. Deletes his own palisades. Places a town center. I love this location, by the way. A beautiful choke point. Access to stone and for the poles, therefore gold. And it is a very powerful gold stone ratio by the way it's one gold unit for every three stone units that is a lot army position not fantastically for mbl meaning that these eagles got a few pot shots off at these skirmishers and now the emergency wall off begins but 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 it's still open here oh what was the point of that deletes his own house here sito playing a very interesting game right now as he's got a bunch of skirmishers what are the upgrades on the long swordsman? Just a plus one armor upgrade. So the eagles should be able to surround and get these guys, even with the attack bonus. This is a lot of eagles, 11 of them. So they do manage to shoot away MBL's army, but again, with that plus two attack bonus, uh, it's not with not without a cost. 11 becomes eight. So he did lose what looks like uh, an equal amount of eagles to long swordsman. Monastery, there we go. There's our warrior monk civilization. Two skirmishers take on what looks like, what, seven? Yep, seven on the high ground versus two on the low ground. Mean this. Your skirmisher is dead and done. Will he get this up before? No. <laughs> so sour. He should be able to get it up, though. Right click, right click, right click. That being said, get it up for what? I wouldn't really put a, start producing monks in the face of skirmishers and longswordsmen. Although, never mind. The long swordsman part definitely gets a convert. Already has a monk out. Where is the monk? Oh, there he is. Nestled between an archery range, a town center, and a barracks. Red, relentless, blue, counterattacking, has discovered the town center. So he knows now that his opponent has gone to town center, immediately plops down a second of his own, realizing, hey, I'm not going to come under massive, massive military aggression. What I'm guessing this little armed force here of 10 units this is a big old distraction, if I had to guess, for what our pole is doing back home. There, you see the uh, blacksmith icon there for a second? And now the poles are going to seed their farms. Look at the uh, food count jump up. 56, 60, 76, 86, and come on, you can do it. 46. Okay, I missed it. it <laughs> this happens every time when I try to show the full work. Then the numbers, the players never... Never cooperate with me, knowing that I'm going to cast this game days later, days and weeks or months after they've played it. They never, ever allow me to uh, show the numbers. And this is the moment the leaf blowers outside my apartment decide to start working. Let me know if you hear them. Although, Flyman, as you know, uh, you're probably going to say you can't hear anything, which uh, which is good. So I'm going to stop mentioning it, but here we go. The skirmisher's actually doing a good amount of uh, work here. Somehow they're still around. 
Their kill count is fantastic for skirmishers. It was 13 right up until the uh, ninth one died. But now the longswordsmen are here. What are their upgrades now? Still not uh, great upgrades. Eagles also not that great. Just a plus one, plus one. So both players focusing on quantity over quality. MBL, a third town center. I thought this was a distraction force, to be honest. Uh, MBL proves me wrong, but he is housed at 75 for a brief second. Sito housed at 60. He is down significantly. And dare I say the worst army composition also, in addition to being down 10 army count. I mean, his opponent has basically countered what he has, and these skirmishers are going to go around preying on the... Monks, oh, <laughs> Monk, why did you stop moving? Keep moving, never stop moving. Go to the town center. Get to the chopper. Okay, he's moving south. He's going to get out of the range of these skirmishers. And now it's hilarious. It was 16, it was 16 to 6. Now it's 14 to 4. So the ratio stays the same of a 10 differential. And now this, oh, will he get a convert on this one? The very, very weak one? No, looks like he uh, what, 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 outranged the monk is the word I'm looking for. But now our monk has 50 HP. Has begun researching the technologies. Has our Aztec no relics for him. By the way, how many relics has Tito seen while the players disengage from one another? He's seen the one we saw earlier, the one in the middle. He's seen the two that are flanking MBL's base. Has not seen the one to the south here. So he's seen the location of four relics. And this is going to give him an opportunity to go and get those relics. And it looks like he's going straight for the easy target here, right in the dead center of the map. Literally, the dead center of the map. House is being plopped down for him. He's housed again, Isito. And now Blue has a decision to make. Does he build up his military or does he start gathering relics? 33% extra gold for your relics is not a small amount if you can get three or more relics. Especially if a game lasts, you know, 35, 40, 45 minutes. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden you're sitting on a thousand extra gold, 800 extra gold. And when you're going Eagles, oh, sorry there. I think the, uh, I think my microphone glitched out. Anyway, as I was saying, extra gold is never a bad thing in Age of Empires. How the hell did you get in here? Oh, there's a, <laughs> there's a gap in the Palisade. So the full works placed around. This is a, an interesting play here out of MBL. Usually you don't see Poles putting farms right next to their town centers just because you're foregoing the 8% that gets added to your coffers. But I guess when your base is this constricted and, and kind of small, I guess he could have placed another full work somewhere here. But I guess space is really an issue here for MBL. So he decided to plop down one, two, three, four. I'm not going to count a whole bunch of farms that are not placed in the most efficient way, teefing the relic to the left. He's going to go teef the relic to the south, the, to the west, rather. Okay, okay. I, I don't mind this at all for our Aztec, who is already going to have four relics, it looks like, assuming this guy manages to get to the relic and back home, which is a pretty big assumption, although without cavalry on the field of battle. Oh my god, Sito, the attack round preempting. Where MBL was going to go absolutely destroys the skirmishers. Unfortunately, the skirmishers are not the ones you want to destroy in this army. <laughs> it's probably the uh, the, the long swordsmen. Still, no attack upgrades for them. But you know what? Uh, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. A dead unit of your opponents is a good time any day of the week. Come on, get your butt. Get your butt back into your settlement. The eagles are starting to swarm. The swordsmen are retreating to the safety of a town center, although moving a little bit beyond. Where are they going? Okay, so he's positioning backwards. He's ready to give up a little bit of infrastructure to get a bit more time. His army count is down. He's producing obus out of the very defensive castle we saw going up in the center of his base. Squires, chainmail armor, finally some upgrades for his infantry. And no, no, now the monk decides. Now is the moment. That you think you're safe to take the relic with <laughs> a big squadron of 21 swordsmen chasing you. Oh, but will they back away? Will they back away now that there are monks here? Aztec monks, not a laughing matter. Put the relic down. Try to get a convert. You... Oh, he's going to save him. Amazing, amazing save there out of Sito. MBL, though, is not done. Where is he going and what does he plan on doing with now 19 of these swordsmen, two having been converted, decides to take a moment to kill 
the two former teammates. Three relics for our Aztec. Has he discovered the one to the south? Still not. So he, there's potentially... I mean, not really potentially, because there was a relic here in this part of the map. So you know it's not going to be right here, right? You know it's not going to be right next to the other one. So he basically knows it's got to be somewhere here to the south. So I'm surprised he's not really exploring it. What he is doing is getting a whole bunch of converts. Oh, no, the fourth relic, the fourth relic. Be careful. Look at this uh, monk taking the risk of his life here. And will pay for it. But man, that monk. Cojones of steel on that guy. Uh-oh. I mean, he's going to get a bunch of converts, but I'm really worried here for these monks. How are they going to respond to all this? This is a lot of swordsmen. I don't think they come with any kind of attack bonuses against monks. Unless I am absolutely mistaken. No, they do not. Eagle Warrior plus six now. <laughs> That's going to be a problem for our Aztec. But you know what? Their slow movement speed, their slow attack speed is actually helping our Aztec. Or maybe not. He lost way too many monks here for what he got in exchange. And at the same time, it looks like he's been pushed out of here. Oh my god, a massacre of monks and eagles. It looks like a few Obuch, though, are uh, lying dead on the field. Oh my god, did he <laughs> convert the buildings as well? In the middle of all of that, our blue Aztec just playing games with our pole. Who is doubling down on Obuchs, expecting eagle warriors. Ooh, I'm not, should he be going... He probably should be going winged Hussar, No. Although in Castle Age, not exactly an option that he has available to him. A very middle-of-the-road castle for our Aztec, right dead center of the map. More conversions attempted, more conversions gotten, but he is exposing his monks. His monks have literally no defending units. No one here to support them except the units he converts, which, by the way, are not that few. Five swordsmen and Obuch. Beautiful placement of a gate there to stall a few more of these annoying, annoying infantry units, which just won't quit. And now there's monks. Monks for our enemy pole against monks of the Aztecs. Aztec monk, though, 55 HP. In a second, once Illumination finishes, he is going to have 60 HP. Oh my god, what an absolute bloodbath. And also, in addition to 60 HP, he's going to be able to regenerate his uh, faith basically twice as fast. And now, block printing, he's going to be able to regenerate his faith while, or rather, after converting units from 12 tiles away. Think of Britain, British uh, longbow mixed in with Cupid's arrow, where every arrow that the longbow fires converts an enemy unit and makes him fall in love with your uh, civilization. Oh my god! What at the end of the day are we even looking at? Six Obuchs! <laughs> Six Obuchs, two long swordsmen, and now he's got, it looks like Jaguar Warriors are out, or a warrior is out. Let's see uh, the uh, upgrades on the swordsmen, by the way. Uh, it's hard to look at with the uh, the Obuch taking their armor down. By the way, look at their armor, zero. Zero armor now, thanks to those Obuch swipes. And look at this army swishing their hips, swishing them like Shakira as they move forward towards the red base, towards the red settlement's northern perimeter, but a whole body of Obuch, and it looks like a few skirmishers in the mix here as well. Three? Three skirmishers in the mix are going to have other plans, and holy moly, is our Aztec doubling down on monks. Theocracy is being researched as well, so he's going to have in three seconds, look at their HP, 70, 75 HP. Another town center being placed next to the gold, not bad at all. A few Obuch just hanging out. Their line of sight is not terrible. I mean, he hasn't seen the houses, but they're not terrible. And has Blue not seen this relic yet? No, he hasn't. So I guess our Aztec is happy to sit on four relics. He's in Imperial, which means, of course, he's got a Treb out, which means his uh, force to the south is now going to be even more annoying as MBL is going to have to decide, where do I focus my military? My small but mighty military of 22 Obos with plus two, plus two, and three whole skirmishers. <gasps> MBL's also, by the way, heading up to Imperial and will also hit Imperial with no fewer than six stables. And we're starting to get scale barding armor. We are starting to see. We are. St oh, oh, wait a second. I was going to say we're starting to see a transition, hopefully, into uh, light cavalry units for the poles with Lakitic Legacy, meaning uh, trample damage. But did Red make a mistake here? Did he lead Blue straight to this relic? Okay, so now Blue with, uh, I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments. Does he have enough monks here to gather that one relic? 
I think so. But the Obos are inside the base here. Probably the two here from the north. They are going to cause a bit of a ruckus because there is nothing here to attack them except a town center. And with their four pierce armor, that town center is going to take a pretty damn long time to get them. Uh, okay. Maybe don't focus too much on the Palisades. They are not exactly a high octane target random villager just kind of waiting with a hammer in their hand what do you want to build you've got no stone there's no more castles coming out for you there it is winged hussars bloodlines blast furnace if our pole can just hold on for another few minutes he will be able to have an absolutely massive massive army of light cavalry units and he by the way is everywhere it looks like the two obus died here to the town center no zero kills for the town center so who killed the obu maybe they didn't even die maybe they're just here to the south with their friends oh what a beautiful unit you guys have seen me fanboying out on this unit by the way take a look at this attack bonus plus 14 gunpowder plus four not exactly something i expect to see with the aztecs on the table but oh the university a little bit too late the villager has to run away but the light cavalry units the hussars they don't give a Rats ass, they're just streaming in here and they're going straight for the monks. One gets converted. Only one gets converted in exchange for all of those monks. They didn't even garrison inside the town center. What an unmitigated disaster here. I mean, he's going to clean this up, but how many monks did he lose for a bunch of trash units that are also streaming in from the south? They're going after the juicy, juicy trap. Will they get it? Oh, they get it. The villager repairs. How many villagers? Four villagers repairing it. <laughs> oh, the Aztec says, what's yours is mine. Gimme, 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 gimme all of your units. As he now has nine Obus, our Aztec has more Obus than our pole. And our Aztec has 11 winged Hussars to 24 of the poles. Forget converting a stable. Can Forget Shalot Warriors. Forget that Trab as he moves forward with his converted army. I mean, what the hell are you supposed to do? Look at the army count, 77 to 27. But look at the villager count. Our Aztec with the more expensive army, he needs to maintain gold. And he's got no gold. Our pole needs food. And he's got 64 villagers on food. Does manage to get... This is going to very much cripple our Aztec's ability to replenish his army convert all you want but if you can't replenish units that are dead you are not long for this game that being said <laughs> you can also lose your entire army all the time to, to aztec monks 35 aztec monks by the way but yeah look at the civilian population for our aztec he has just been gutted he has just been hurt and poked at and prodded with those obus man oh man did they do a number on his economy I mean, 61 villager kills to 32. That's double the villager kills and not 5 to, you know, 5 to 10. It's 30 to 60. But now he's returning the favor. Returning the favor very temporarily. Is there Lakitic Legacy yet? No, no uh, area of effect damage just yet. And he clears that up. I hear the twanging of a treb. Man, our Aztec is just pushing in. This is why you need trample damage on your winged hussars to engage into a bunch of pike. No, no. Interesting. No unique upgrades for either player at the moment. No uh, Eldorado. Or, oh my god. I always say Eldorado. I mean Garland Wars for the uh, pikemen to add plus four to their attack. And no Lakitic Legacy for these winged hussars to add an area of effect range, meaning trample damage. But now there's Hal Oh my god, Albert Ears. Arbalest's out. I mean, the good news for our pole, who, I mean, it, it, to put a silver lining on all this, because his base is being pushed into with an army supply that's 20 more than his, is that he's got the perfect allocation to research Lickitic Legacy. He just needs a little bit more gold. There it is. He does what he can, and there it goes. Let's see that trample damage. I think that's bad news bears for our Aztec. Our Aztec now has a basically clock. He sees, by the way, all of these ranged units and their upgrades. Ooh, not bad. Just one upgrade away from being fully upgraded, it looks like. Still no attack upgrades on the pike. Still only two of the three armor upgrades. 
Oh my goodness. Here we go. <laughs> Onager's upgrade being researched for our Aztec. And they are these... Why is he retreating? Okay, a tactical retreat to the west to draw the pikemen into the arbalests while sacrificing the scout line units to the east. The problem is the monks, the monks have been left un, unharassed. And oh man, he's got four trebs shelling away at the arbalests. I think he got a few of them. Two kills is <laughs> not bad for, for four trebuchets. Okay, managed to convert a barracks while at the same time our pole realizes it. Oh no, the monks, the monks are exposed, but there's so many of them. What's their HP now? 85, only two final technologies upgrades. But with trample damage, you really don't want to clump them like this. Take a look at this. Trample damage area of effect range is half a tile is not a small amount. And man, oh man, 35 monks has become eight. And this is what I was talking about earlier. The ability of our Aztec now to replenish his army is literally non-existent. The Trebs, even they're aimless. They're doing nothing. They're attacking a house. Okay, Onager managing to get a good shot, but it's not a Siege Onager. And now we're back into the Poles Playground because he's got 50 villagers on food, 27 Hussars being built at a time. Arbalests are managing to wreck the Trebs, which are now packed, and their armor goes way down when they're packed. And that's it. I think uh, this must be GG, even with the castle. Okay, if you can get this castle down... It's probably GG. I, I honestly think it's already GG. Oh my god, look at our pole expanding to the west, expanding to the south. Because again, our Aztec, what is he rebuilding? He's rebuilding pikemen with squires. Now, don't get me wrong. Pikemen with garland wars fully upgraded are not a laughing matter. Especially against uh, winged hussars. Let me take a look. With only three melee armor. So don't forget the, the pike attack which will be, I believe, I want to say plus eight. And then on top of that, a 22 attack bonus against cavalry. So it's not a laughing matter. The problem is that's just fanciful thinking because at this moment, our Aztec has no money for anything. He is going onagers against winged hussars. Okay. I mean, this is pretty, uh, pretty good catch. Tinkle, tinkle, go the pikemen as they capture a few... HP points off of these winged hussars, but a few of them peel off to the left. They're going after the juicier target, the Onager. I don't know if MBL realizes that Sito is gold hungry and gold starved, has no more gold. All of his gold is going into Onagers. Sito establishing another base here. Oh my god, the pole! The pole is going to get stone and therefore gold as well as he moves out with more <laughs> units. Yikes! 52 Arbalests. 24 winged hussars in the production tab are descending. Oh, but they're they're clumped. They're clumped and there's two onagers. Well, hello, wake up, onager to the south. Wake up. Two absolutely shitty, shitty, shitty shots there. But it's enough. Like I said, these aren't siege onagers. These are imperial age, fully upgraded arbalests. And now the last of the monks... Yeah, that was a foregone conclusion. There was no way our Asta could come back from losing all 35 of those monks. Like I said, he had the absolute badass army. Unfortunately for him, he was getting whittled down unit by unit by unit by unit by trash units. And 46 Arbalest still left. Although I suspect they didn't really play a major role here in the GG decision. It's probably this unit. That played a bigger role. 49 villagers on food. He's got 30 in total with enough food for 30 or so more. Man, oh man. And now he's raiding to the south. Now he's taking the stone. So this is 62. And then three basically full. Yeah, this is another third, 300 and something gold or so for our pole in addition to the thousand or so stone that's there. And that I believe, if I'm looking out on the map, might be the last mineral patch resource patch out on the map i don't think there's any more gold or stone unless i'm missing something no there looks like there's a little bit of gold here so no our pole just expanding way too much and our aztec even though he was down six to 60 villagers did manage to get his numbers back up pretty nicely not bad at all but really what betrayed him is that gold count let's take a look 
I'm very curious at what five relics give an Aztec in a 56 minute game. 138 Hussars, 103 Monks. Both players, PKPM, very similar. One at the beginning of the game, one at the end of the game. But here we go. What do we think? Holy shit, 4,000 gold. So like I said, divide, divide this by 1.33 and you'll get what? An, about an, a thousand or so extra gold for our uh, for our Aztec. Man, oh man, he had 5,000 or so more gold than his opponent. That is all relic. But our poll leading the way in everything else. Look at the differential here. 24,000. 40% bigger economy. Conversions. 87 conversions out of an army high of 315 is what? 25% of our Polish army got converted? Wow. 406 kills for the poll. 233 for the Aztec. And villager kill. That difference of 30 or so remains. So man, oh man. Did Cito build just a magnificent, beautiful, powerful, insanely entertaining army to watch? But ultimately, once that army got whittled down by a combination of these cheap trash units and their backups that got rid of all the pikemen, he just didn't have the resources left. Even if he sold wood, even if he sold food, he would not have enough gold to be able to replenish his army as quickly as MBL, who at the end of the game... Sorry for zooming out so much on a smaller screen if you're watching. Had 13 stables at the end of the game and basically monopolized all of the resources out on the map. And with those resources and with the winged assault, like I said, let me know in the comments. Is there a unit in the game that has a big, bigger attack bonus against monks than the winged hussar? And if it does, is it as mobile and cheap and versatile as the winged hussar? I think this might be the best monk sniping unit in the game. I think so. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But using the monk snipers, the monk warrior civilization lays flat, dying bloody on the ground as our pole MBL takes the W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.